So here is the plan, and it really is quite simple. I'm going to attempt to ride up out to Zwift with my dog and beat the current world record time for riding up out to Zwift with a dog, a record currently held by me with my dog, because nobody else has ever done it. Now, because riding up the Alp takes quite a while, even in world record time, I'm going to now jump to what will be about one hour from now, so you can actually see me get started on the attempt. Once I'm then underway, I'll come back and explain a bit more about what you will then be able to see taking place. Okay, I think we are there. I've got my hydration, my nutrition, my target times, ride buddy, strapped in and ready to go. Just need some musical motivation. Gonna keep it seasonal for that as well. Echo, play Walking in the Air. Walking in the Air. Good to go. On Amazon Music. Really? I'm just kidding about the music. Echo, play Rocky IV. You ready? Let's do it. And I'm off, I hope. I haven't done it yet, so if I die on the way up, this is all gonna be a bit pointless. Let's assume I am riding a bike somewhere on the screen right now. So first of all, while I'm currently the only idiot to have done out to Zwift with a dog, let me explain the three official rules in case you fancy a go yourself. One, the course. Out to Zwift is what it is. You start at the bottom and complete all 21 corners on your way to the top. Zwift will then record your time automatically. Interestingly, Zwift will also record your time between each individual corner. That's useful because, as you'll see, it allows me to compare my progress up the mountain versus previous rides. Two, the equipment. A heart rate monitor and calibrated smart trainer for accurate power and effort measurements. And a means of carrying your canine companion in such a way that their weight is supported by you. So no, you can't stick them in a basket, E.T. styly. And of course, their weight must be added to your Zwift profile on top of your own, which leads nicely to rule three, the dog. If you are a super lightweight climbing specialist, don't get all excited that you can go and grab your miniature Chihuahua Kokushitsu, stuff him in your pocket, and crush this challenge. The dog needs to meet the Mark Lewis, is that really a dog, three-step criteria. One, could it survive alone in the wilderness for 48 hours? Two, if forced to defend itself in a fight to the death against two large house cats simultaneously, would it be victorious? And three, if you presented it with a hamster wheel as a viable means of exercise, would it bite you in disgust? If the answer to all three is yes, you are good to go. Unfortunately, if any of your answers are no, then I regret to inform you, you don't own a dog. Now, in case you are not a Zwift user, or perhaps you are, but have not ridden up the Alp before, let me explain what you are seeing on the screen. I'm the cyclist in the middle wearing the neon Lycra. Now, there may well be other riders around. They are just doing their own thing. This is not a race. They just happen to be climbing the Alp at the same time that I am. We then have my current wattage, my current heart rate, and my current revolutions per minute. There is then the mini map displaying my approach to the next corner and the current gradient of the hill. We also have the time spent between corners along with the average wattage and average heart rate for that section. And lastly, and most importantly perhaps, the total elapsed time so far. Anything else you can see that I've not mentioned is not particularly important. Now, I think it would be useful to explain both my experience of climbing this route in the past and also the approach that I'm gonna be adopting today. But I think I'll pick that up after I've ridden up it and know that I did at the very least complete it. I do have a slight fear that I might actually be recording all this only for it never to see the light of day. Not here, on YouTube anyway, maybe in a coroner's report. So me and Nixon are gonna go and prepare to hopefully do what you are currently seeing me do, and I will be back. Spoiler alert, I do eventually get up the mountain, and I know what you're thinking about the t-shirt. Is that not way more baggy than the ones you normally wear? It's Jenna's, I stole it. I thought it might be fun for Christmas, and yes, it's huge on her. She wears it as a kind of nightshirt thing when she wants that kind of sexy rodent look. Right, let me explain my approach to this climb so that we can start rattling through these corners. Now, lots of people will talk about average watts per kilo you need to generate to get up the Alp de Zwift. I prefer to go corner to corner, using my previous corner times as a target. 
On the desk in front of me, I had those times for both the 5909 PB that I'd done alone and the one hour, three minutes 50 with the dog PB slash world record. Actually, I'm missing a couple of the dog corner times because I accidentally wiped over the recording of that ride, but you'll see as I get to each corner, the time for that corner today versus the dog time and the PB time where I've got them available. So for example, as we get to corner 21, I hit it at four minutes 21. My solo PB, I was there at 4.10, Last time with Nixon, 4.14, so already behind. Good start. I'm now going to start jumping corner to corner in turn while I explain my history with the Alp. It's pretty straightforward. December last year, I attempted it for the first time ever with no idea what I should be aiming for and was just outside the hour. So Christmas Eve last year, exactly a year ago today, I set off to try and get sub 60 minutes on just my second attempt and I got that 59.09, a time that I have never yet beaten. That said, I've only ridden it a couple of times since then. One of those was the day after I'd run a marathon in a crazy heat wave until I literally fell unconscious in the street. I then just squeezed under the hour that time. And the time most relevant to today was when I rode up it with Nixon. The idea then was that I dropped 14 kilos in weight during the year. I wanted to see what difference adding back that weight on made. Nixon at the time was just under 14 kilos. So I strapped him on my back, added the weight on the Zwift and off we went. One hour, three minutes, 50 seconds. That is today's goal. Now, at the end of the video covering that last ride with Nixon, I said that I would come back on Christmas Eve today and get under 60 minutes. However, that was because my expectation was that I would be weighing now about 92 kilos. When I last rode with Nixon, I was 94. So with his 14, that made us 108. The reason I thought I'd be lighter now was because I had an ultra marathon at the beginning of this month. Being 92 kilos-ish would have been ideal. So that was my target until I changed my mind. To make that ultra marathon more challenging, more entertaining, that's a lie, I just wanted to eat donuts, I ran it way too heavy. I've then spent the last few weeks since then, and the last week in particular, eating very little in order to get as light as I can for this. Unfortunately, I am still heavier than I was last time, 95 kilos. The good news is that Nixon is lighter. In fact, he's significantly lighter. I weighed him last night, he's bang on 12. He's actually been doing a crazy amount of running lately, three races in December alone with two more in the diary between Christmas and New Year. In fact, Jenna wants to start immediately increasing his meal size because she thinks that 12 is too light. And I've agreed as of tomorrow. So 95 plus 12 gives us 107. Lighter than last time, but nowhere near as light as I wanted to be. And as such, going into this, I was not confident at getting under the hour at all. And even breaking the previous time seemed tough going. Now I've been doing a lot of training lately, but actually not much cycling. I've got other events coming up in January mainly the High Rocks competition, so I've been kind of focused elsewhere. I wasn't ideally prepared, so that's the background. Let's get into this ride. In summary, absolutely f***ing brutal. I was missing, as you'll see from the times, corner after corner, not by much, but dropping three or four seconds repeatedly. Each corner, that just adds up to a deficit. It's really hard to come back from. As a perfect example, here, heading for corner 10, and it's an important one, because pretty much it's halfway. If you want to break the hour, you need to be getting here under 30 minutes. Last time with Nixon, I was there in 30 minutes, 14 seconds. This was going to be the point where I got a real sense of how this was playing out. And it's interesting. Here, Stuart Smith, whoever you are, happy Christmas, gives me and Nixon a little shout out. And knowing people are watching, even if it's just Stuart, was motivating. I actually dug down and pushed really hard at this point. Stuart was my Adrian. As a result, I get that corner in two minutes 47, much faster than last time with Nixon. Here's the problem though, total elapsed time over 30 minutes 30 seconds. One good corner's not enough. I've gotta be knocking chunks off every corner from now on to get that record. And corner nine, I do actually do that. Three seconds faster than last time. Psychologically, I'm obviously helped here by now being up in the snow. So my ability to visualize myself actually powering through these wintry conditions as I'm actually in the greatest Christmas movie of all time, does lend itself to a slightly increased performance level. Corner eight gets me another second, and then corner seven gets me 10 seconds. And by the way, if you're thinking, isn't Die Hard the greatest Christmas movie of all time? No, Rocky IV literally fights on Christmas day. Die Hard second, Lethal Weapon third. Gremlins joint fourth with Love Actually. Corner five, this is a biggie, because I did have a note of the total elapsed time from my previous ride. So I hit the corner seven seconds up on my last corner time, my total elapsed time 47.51. It was 47.47 last time, so I'm only four seconds adrift here. Corner four, I hit it the same time as last time, 
corner three, I'm eight seconds up. At this point, for the first time in the entire race, I'm thinking, I have got this. And then, I don't quite know how, but I lose 15 seconds getting to corner two on my last time. I don't know where, it's only a two minute corner. I'm now in serious trouble. I've watched this footage back repeatedly for the life of me. I don't know why this corner took so long. I don't make up anything getting to the last corner, so it all comes down to the final push to the line. My hands here are slipping in the sweat on the bars. I throw my towel on them so I can stand with a decent grip and not fall off, and just try and mash some power out. But there's no way I can hold that all the way to the top. I've got to sit back down at some point. And then less than two minutes to go, the ETA comes up. 64, 23, I've got to find over 30 seconds. And standing up, getting those watts up around 350, that ETA does start dropping. I just don't know if it's gonna drop in time. And I am doing everything I can. Everything hurts here, I feel like throwing up. My legs are numb and excruciatingly painful at the same time. There is not another single watt that I could have found available. I can't even describe the visualization process that's going on in my head to try and motivate me. It's like multiple montages of every rocky training montage ever to have been montaged. I've got Apollo running up and down the beach. I've got one arm press ups going on. Mickey's talking about fast chickens and Duke shouting no pain. It's a mess and it is not enough. All I can do is push hard to the line. We failed. Um, Dude, we didn't fail, I failed. Nixon came in underweight, I let him down. I'm sorry. What are you doing? He's eating the gels off the floor. Are you yummy? Um, 20 seconds off, we'd have been, we'd have, if I'd have been even the weight I was at last time, we'd have done it. Let alone the weight I should have been, 92 kilos, not 95. Those three kilos is just um, too much to make up on that hill. Um, gutted, absolutely gutted. Did everything I could. I don't think I had anything else to give. I was at the at the limit. Just, just couldn't get it done today. Not today. Not today. 64 minutes, 15 seconds, 25 seconds off, and nothing else I could have done. Looking back at it, there wasn't anywhere that I took it easy. We just had a lack of power and an excess of weight, maths. Looking at it positively, how do I look at it positively? I suppose it's motivated me to be super sensible with diet over Christmas. I do not want to be going to the High Rocks competition in January, moaning yet again that I'm too heavy for sewing. And it was only 25 seconds, which means we will get it next time. And sometimes having a setback is no bad thing. It reminds you that if you do not put in the work, you do not get the results. It is not a free ride to being pretty good at something. And even when you are above average, Sometimes you're Rocky and sometimes you're Drago. Today, I'm Drago. Although he did get to go home with 1980s Bridget Nielsen and Rocky went home to discover that his accountant had lost all his money while he'd been in Russia. So, swings roundabouts. Oh, and I'm kidding about Love Actually, I hate it. Although, I'd love to see it remade today, if only because that annoying kid running through Heathrow. Nowadays, he's getting tasered at least. Happy Christmas.